Welcome to Bible Believers Fellowship and the ministry of BBFOhio.com. As we begin this study in Colossians chapter 3, verses 5 through 8, titled, Mortify Therefore Your Members. If you have any questions, comments, or prayer requests, you can send those by email to BBFOhio at ProtonMail.com. That's BBFOhio at P-R-O-T-O-N-M-A-I-L dot com. Or you can send your prayer requests and comments or questions along with any check or money order donations made out to Bible Believers Fellowship by sending those to our U.S. Postal Address, P.O. Box 662, Worthington, Ohio, 43085. You can also donate by going to bbfohio.com and using the PayPal donation button on the right-hand side of the screen. We want to remind you we do not solicit gifts, but we are providing this information to save some aggravation. As people wish to give, we want them to know exactly how they can give. And now we begin our study in Colossians chapter 3, verses 5 through 8, titled, Mortify Therefore Your Members. This is part one of two. Current events update. First, we're going to start with China. China, the country. China cracks down on Christianity by demolishing churches and confiscating Bibles. Uh, that's one of the reasons why uh, Donald Trump is wanting to get tough on uh, China is because of human rights violations as well as uh, just as a FYI, how many of you have been told that uh, the, the, what we've had with China up to this point is called free trade? You heard that? It's, that's a lie. What we've had with China up to this point is um, we charge no tariffs for their stuff to come into our country. They charge exorbitant tariffs. They also are thieves. And people in this country have been miseducated through their public education system. It's controlled by communists. The NEA is a communist organization. And so they don't want you to know that China is still a communist country. They're still imprisoning and killing people. And it, as communism doesn't change. Your news media has changed. It's fake. It's, uh, it's communist. And so what we're doing with China is trying to make them act like they're a part of the uh, global system of free trade. They're not. And one of their major human rights abuses is against Christians. Yeah, right. Do you think your 90% uh, registered Democrat news media cares about Christians? No. no, they don't. The ruling party in China is attempting to increase their control over religious freedom in the country, most recently by taking a crackdown on Christianity. In the country's province of Henan, which has one of the largest Christian populations in China, churches were raided and demolished. Bibles and holy books were confiscated, and new laws were established to monitor religious activities. So it would be like this morning, a bunch of uh, jack-booted thugs coming in here, making you all line up on the walls at gunpoint, they take all of our books and our Bibles, and we never see them again. They march you outside into the parking lot and make you watch as they demolish this church building. Then they'll take me and anyone else identified as a leader to prison. That's what China is doing to Christians right now. And if you didn't have any other reason to understand that your news media is not news, it's programming. They don't tell you the truth, they tell you what they want you to think. If this was a bunch of homosexuals being treated like this in China, you'd be hearing about it. But our news media is anti-Christian. The intensity of the government crackdowns have increased in recent months. Just this year they have shut down hundreds of Christian house churches, seized Bibles and forced e-commerce re retailers to stop selling. Bibles, prevented children from attending church, urged Christians in one location to replace posters of Jesus with pictures of President Z or Zire, where 
you know, G, G. Chi. Just think about that. Take down the pictures and banners of Jesus and Bible verses and put up communist pictures and the picture of President Chi. All these liars in our news media are talking about Trump being a dictator. That's what he would do if he were a dictator. He would put his picture in churches. That's what dictators do. That's what's happening in China. To, vo to avoid becoming targets in the government campaign, many congregations are meeting in smaller groups in person and online. Enoch, a 22-year-old Christian in southern China, said, We are trying to look more like a family that are here to chat and drink tea so no one will report us to the police. Yeah. Quote, I'm really afraid it will be shut down one day. At the state church, I felt like I was listening to a lecture. But at the family church, people know about each other and love each other. According to the Associated Press, experts said President Xi is, quote, waging the most severe systematic... Listen, this, uh, uh, this is Associated Press saying this. Quote, President Xi is... I'm sorry quote, waging the most severe systematic suppression of Christianity in the country since religious freedom was written into the Chinese Constitution in 1982. Wow. Since I was 13 years old, this is the worst that it's been in China, and it isn't on your fake news media. And I mean the local yokels as much as the national. They just read a script, folks. They're actors. Every one of those anchors sitting behind that desk know nothing. They are reading a script on a teleprompter in front of their face. Wow. It's scripted and it's controlled. It's fake. It's not news. Now here's just a little tidbit on health. Charlie made an announcement, I think it was Wednesday, not to touch his wife or baby. He's not joking. And here's why. Doctors warn parents as peak season approaches for dangerous respiratory virus. Doctors are warning of a potentially deadly virus affecting the respiratory system of kids and infants. It's a well-known virus among those who have had children, but most people don't know it even exists. The virus could be very dangerous. It's called RSV. It stands for respiratory syncytial virus. It often pops up around this time, mostly in young children. It affects kids' ability to breathe. Symptoms often include runny nose, coughing, wheezing, and a fever. Doctors say it often mimics a common cold, but can be much worse. It's highly contagious, so doctors advise washing your hands and staying away from people with the virus, which is kind of hard to do. It's the people with the virus who need to stay away from other people. That's the real point that they should be making. If you think you're sick, if you think you, you're, you've, like I tell people, I have a chronic condition, allergies and all this, so I blow my nose and cough more than the average person. But I can tell when it's more, you feel the chills and the fever and that kind of thing coming. And if you feel like that, we love you, but stay home. And if you get here and start feeling like that, feel free to leave, but don't touch people or things so that it spreads. That's the main thing. Um, 500 children and 14,000 adults die each year from RSV. Wow. So the children survive it most of the time. It's the old people that it cleans out. 14,000, and that's CDC uh, statistics. I went right to their website because if you go to anybody else, no one, people believe their government. <laughs> I'm serious, people believe their government. So that's the statistics that they give. But. Um, 500 children, people say, well, that's not very many in a nation of 300 million. Yeah, but there are 500 families who think it was pretty serious. <laughs> but even if a child doesn't die, is it okay to watch them go to the hospital and be put in the ICU and intubated and all that? No. We don't want that for our kids. So that's why we ask you not to be touchy, especially with the pregnant ladies and the new babies, especially. But even with Gloria, if you watch me, if, there are times where I don't touch her. If I feel like I might be... I don't touch her. And, uh, and even now, I'll just kiss her on the head. I don't do much kissing on the cheeks or anything like that because I just don't want to expose anybody. And the final thing in the current events update is that the city of Worthington is uh, preparing to pass an ordinance that will update their discrimination ordinance, and they're going to add fiction 
They're going to add something that isn't even real, something that's a figment of the liberal imagination, the progressive imagination. They're going to add gender identity or expression. So that means that if you want to buy or sell anything, you have real estate, you want to sell your house, you're going to sell a car, you're going to rent a house, you're going to do any, you give a loan, any of these things being done in Worthington. And uh, someone comes in and they are a man, but they call themselves Cherie and say that you have to call him a woman. If you don't do that, then you will be fined uh, and could end up being, you know, whatever license you have revoked or whatever with the city and be run out of business. Now, I just want to tell you something. That is liberalism. Period. I'm so sick of hearing people say, well, it doesn't matter, liberal, conservative. Yes, it does. A liberal is a godless, Bible-rejecting fool who wants you to pretend that a man is a woman. Or a woman is a man. Back when this country had a brain, those people were sent for help. Now they're demanding that you go along with their insanity and you are the one in trouble. Coming to Worthington, we'll give you more information on that as time goes on, but there's a meeting, I believe January 4th, a secret little meeting that they didn't want me to know about, but they don't know that I'm getting the information. And they're going to meet with the city managers and the, the city council, and they're going to, they've got, I got a PDF copy of the little uh, ordinance that they're going to uh, talk about voting on, and it'll probably be voted on sometime later in February, March, or something like that and um, we'll keep you updated. It's, it's going to happen. Worthington has been handed over to the liberals and that's why your uh, property taxes are so stupid, stupidly high. It's just insane and they keep getting higher. And these people in this town are so shot through with their godless evolutionary ideas about socialism that they have never met a tax they won't vote for. Since, we, since I married Jenny, Everyone gets passed. Taxes just keep going up and up and up. And you hear people complaining. Well, if you're voting for, for them, why do you complain? It is. But we'll close our current events update with this summary. Liberals are anti-Christian. You just need to get that. Now, being a conservative doesn't mean you're a Christian. And there's some conservatives who, you know, are uh, godless in their personal life and all that. But... By its definition, conservatism is stick to the book by, in, in religion. By its definition, conservative is stick to the Constitution. That's what conservatism is. Liberalism is we don't give a flip about what God says. Liberalism is we don't give a flip about that Constitution. Liberalism is it's a living, breathing document. That means we can make it say whatever we want. That means they're liars. You're facing liars. Liberals are liars. And that's what's killing this country. Liars. And I'm going to preach that. And I don't care. I'm, I love y'all, but I don't care if y'all leave. I'm going to keep preaching that. Because it's the truth. And I've had people call in on our radio program and say, well, I don't think you should preach politics. Well, then you're a fake Christian because Jesus is supposed to be Lord of your entire life. Fake and we got a lot of fake preachers who every week will get up here and there do you know I would be surprised if there's more than, than I could count on my hand how many preachers are going to educate their people on these things that we talk about especially that local ordinance it'll probably be passed and most people in churches won't even know it's happening except for the liberal churches they'll have their people calling and writing and supporting it amen all right, let's go ahead and get it. We're going to be in Colossians 3, but let's open with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord, for everyone here this morning. We thank you because we see all these things going on that we've talked about in this current events update. They are a fulfillment of prophecy. They are a confirmation that you know the future. You have told us beforehand that this is what's going to happen. You also told us that 9 out of 10 professing Christians will be useless. You told us in the last days that most Christians will be bums. You told us that they won't give a flip about your word. They won't do a thing. They won't support the work with their money, their time, or anything. And that's what we're seeing. All the money goes to the crooks on TV. 
The big churches are the churches where the preachers are hirelings who don't preach the, the Word of God. Thank you, Lord, for telling us ahead of time. Otherwise, I'd be angry about it. Otherwise, I'd probably be uh, so fed up, I might even uh, be in those churches uh, yelling at the preacher from the pews and trying to stir up trouble. But instead, we're going to do what you've told us to do, and that is to be faithful. And when we've done all that we can do, stand. Amen. And we are going to stand. And we thank you for the Holy Spirit, because without Him, we wouldn't have the courage. Without the Holy Spirit, we wouldn't have the power of God that begins with the gospel and continues by faith. Faith in your word. We thank you, Lord, for all that you've given us from this book. And we pray this morning you help us to continue in our study. Lord, to make this real in our lives, not to just hear, but to be doers. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Mortify, therefore, your members. Chapter 3, beginning of verse 5. And if you got your Bible open, we're going to read one, two, three, four verses, five through eight. Give you just a second to get there. And you'll see as most of the time we take our title right out of the words of Scripture. And uh, mortify. Love that word. <laughs> All right, let's read verses 5 through 8. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. All right, now I know some of you might have tripped over a word there. It gets easier. Verse 6. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, in the which ye also walked sometime when ye lived in them. But now ye also put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. I'm going to stop there. And uh, we're, we're going to have some good stuff in these uh, next few weeks to preach on, but right now, we got some good stuff right here. Verse 5, Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Boy, this is a key reason why so few Christians are worth anything today. Because they reject this. They don't bother reading it, most people. According to the statistics, very few Christians read their Bible. And that's the one thing you get about coming to Bible Believers Fellowship is if, if nothing else, if you come on Sunday and Wednesday, you're going to read the Bible on those days. Amen. We don't have a denominational handbook or a lection or a, what do they call it, liturgy, where we preach what the denomination told us to say and all that. We just preach through the Bible. Amen. So if you keep coming, you're going to get it. And... This is basically saying we must diligently die to our flesh. Now, God supposes, or actually assumes, that a born-again Christian reading the Bible is going to use their brain. Amen? Amen. So you got common sense, although it's not common today. Yeah. It should be common among born-again Christians. And that is to say there are obviously some things in the flesh that aren't sinful. Although it's... Some of them, even though they're not sinful, it's things we do because of sin. Uh, for example, uh, we have to eat. And uh, so we eat what? Dead animals. We, eat, we kill plants. Why? Death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. And it affects the animal kingdom and the plant kingdom. You have to kill an animal to eat it. Amen? Amen. So even though it's not a sin, it's because of sin that you're eating that steak. That wonderful, delicious New York strip, medium well at, uh, well, there's a few restaurants I won't endorse publicly, but there's a few that really do a good job on that. Anyway, I love animals. Right next to my mashed potatoes and my green beans, amen? amen. But you know, I love animals too that uh, we don't eat. We're not going to eat Sebi or uh, Cammy unless, unless we get really desperate. <laughs> Cammy would be like uh, using 
You, she made toothpicks or something, but. <laughs> so what my point is, there are some things you do in the flesh that even though they're not sinful, they are because of sin. Take, you have to wash your flesh, amen? I'm glad most of you did because you stink after a while, amen? Why? Because of sin. See what I'm saying? So the things you do to your flesh, that are, it's right to do. But there are also things that you need to let go of. There are things you do in the flesh that may feel natural. Uh, we're not to go by feelings. Nope. Feelings. Whoa. That's led a lot of people to adultery. Yeah. It's let a lot of people do a lot of things they shouldn't do. Why? Because then they're being ruled by their flesh. Yeah. Paul said, I die daily. Amen. I die daily. So Amen. that's why we don't teach a second work of grace. And uh, the Church of Nazarene official doctrine is second work of grace. Churches of Christ and Christian Union, you mentioned this morning. Others, they believe after you get saved, then you have an emotional experience. And uh, most of the time, I used to run that circle, you know, the first few years I was saved, and they'd come down to the altar call, you know, and then they'd you know, have experience. They wouldn't speak in tongues, that's kind of a Pentecostal thing, but what they would do is believe that they'd have this, and they'd most of the time cry and carry on. And it was a second work of grace, where the sinful nature is eradicated. And so from that point on, they played pretend. And they acted like they weren't sinning. It was just a mistake or, you know, bad judgment, but it's not a sin, see? So in other words, they're taught to lie. <laughs> hey, I'm just telling you, heresy begets heresy. You believe that nonsense, then you go down the road of heresy. This is the biblical way. Amen. And you know what? You not only die daily, but sometimes you may have died in the morning and said, all right, totally belong to you, Lord, totally belong to you, and then on the drive in, all of a sudden you lose your religion. Right. <laughs> Or you get to work, and because of your co-workers, you, t you go carnal. At any point, you can stop. And you don't even have to get alone with God. I, heard some people, hear, I hear people say, get alone with God. Well, God's there with you. You don't have to be alone with Him. At that point, you can be surrounded by people, and in your heart, you can say, Lord, I'm sorry, I'm flunking. Yeah, I intended on living my life dead to flesh, I flunked, but here, 11.45 a.m., I'm going to set my goal again. Allow your spirit to control me. I'm going to try to live by your word. I'm going to stop thinking of my thoughts and start thinking your thoughts. That's why the Bible says, Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. Because if, once you allow your thoughts to control, you're in the flesh. But if your thoughts are controlled by the word of God in you, suddenly you'll find yourself doing the right thing. That's what it means. Alexander McLaren wrote this, this uh, 19th century preacher. Quote, the first consequence of the risen life is negative. We talked about it last week. If you be risen with Christ. Well, if you are risen with Christ, that means you're saved, you're born again. The old man's supposed to be dead. The new man we'll talk about next week more. That's the consequence of the risen life. You're now risen with Christ. It's negative. The death or putting off of the old nature... The life which belongs to and is ruled by earth. Gone. That's supposed to be the consequence of the risen life. Verses 5 through 9 solemnly lay on the Christian the obligation to put this to death. That's when you hear me say, die to self. Christians, your goal is to be a dead man walking. You're now dead to yourself. Amen. What would I be doing... This is a question of what you ask yourself. This is to give you an idea of whether or not you've at least started on your way to live in this life of being mortifying the deeds of the flesh. What would you be doing if you weren't a Christian? Just like, for example, not trying to pat you on the head and applaud you, but it's just a fact. There are people who should be here right now who just are sitting around like lazy bums. Yeah. You came here this morning, that's good, that's good evidence that uh, you're at least, to some extent, putting off the desires of your flesh to just lay there in bed, to get up in your pajamas and watch something on TV, 
or to whatever. Or maybe you want to, you'd rather get up and go out and golf. Or whatever it is there are people doing on Sunday morning than instead of coming to church. Those people have not put off the deeds of the flesh. They have not mortified the deeds of the flesh. Now, that's just Sunday and Wednesday night where you have that opportunity. There's also turning off the boob tube and doing your Bible study, your Bible reading. That's just hard for some people to do. Uh, I, w I worked with a lady who uh, used to be able to catch every, uh, every day her TV shows. Back then it was Oprah and some uh, soap opera she'd DVR, or back then it was VC VHS, using VCR, record it. She kept up with her soap and she kept up with her Oprah and she kept up with whatever. Then would look you in the eye and say she didn't have time most days to read the Bible. I just I always run out of time. Because she isn't willing to mortify the deeds of the flesh. Those are just some simple examples. Now he goes on to describe these. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness. And that's talking about the thought life, which is idolatry. That's pretty much a description of modern America. Modern American culture. I mean, if you turn on... Uh, even the news, what they call the news, every once in a while I'll watch it to see what is going on. They can't go through a news broadcast most of the time without keeping you up to date on what's going on with the so-called stars. Yeah. Is that news? Not in a sane world. But you'll find out who's marrying who and who's divorcing who and who's cheating on who. And they always show the entertainers while they're talking about them, they'll show their stage act, and it looks like a bunch of whores just up there almost naked, flopping everything around. You can't even let your kids watch the news. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, all that on the evening news. Uh, not endorsing them by any means, but I remember back when I was, I think as maybe early 80s, Don Henley of the Eagles, he wrote a song called Dirty Laundry. We all know that crap is king. Give us dirty laundry. That's the truth. Kick them when you're up. Kick them when you're down. Yeah. Once in a while, even the godless get it right. He nailed it in that song. And that's, our, that's what's become, anyway, our culture. Fornication. Uncleanness. I mean, it's just you look at your social media feed, and you'll see it. You should look at your family and friends, and you'll find them trying to act like their children are okay while living in fornication uncleanness. And they'll just put it right out there without any shame. Listen. I have no shame in my children who are walking in the light. And even if they fail, I have no shame in that. We all but when one of my children are totally living outside of the Lord, I'm not going to mention them. I'm not going to act like what they're doing is okay. Listen, just because it's your kid doesn't make it okay. Just because it's your offspring, if one of my kids came to me and said, I, I'm gay, I said, well, then you're lost. You need to repent. If some, one of my kids were shacked up with some woman or some man, whichever the case may be, and they came and wanted to just act like everything's all right, I'm sorry. It ain't going to be happy time at the Miller's.